So you want to daily ride your motorcycle, huh? Just about every motorcyclist who is deep in the throes of two-wheeled infatuation has experienced this desire. Whether you've managed to convince yourself that you'd save money by exclusively riding a motorcycle instead of driving a car, or you've just come to the conclusion that your general disposition will be improved, there is a lot to consider before you abandon the cager life altogether. Like any male teenager has concluded after too many late night sessions in the family computer room, it is possible to have too much of a good thing. So if your plan is to ride your bike daily, throwing caution to the wind and rejecting convenience for the sake of freedom, expect a few hiccups or two. But if you do your research and plan accordingly, you'll greatly minimize the instances of inconvenience that may come from dailying a motorcycle. So without further ado, let's get into it. Here is your guide on how to daily ride a motorcycle. One of the biggest obstacles for the daily motorcycle rider is the inability to avoid bad weather. Compared to the weekend warrior, a motorcyclist whose bike is their sole form of transportation is going to succumb to the will of mother nature every so often. Riding a motorcycle in bad weather is by no means an impossible feat, it's really not a big deal, but it will require you to adapt your attire and riding style in order to stay safe and dry. Because I imagine it would make it even harder to sell cell phone plans at the T-Mobile store if you're soaked head to toe in precipitation and road grime before you show up to work. The daily motorcyclists will live by the weather forecast, making determinations on their attire or modifying the time of their commute to try to avoid getting caught in a storm. But if you're riding your motorcycle exclusively, a wet and wild ride is inevitable. If you're really committed to daily riding your motorcycle, keep some rain gear with you you can throw on if things start to get wet. There are plenty of options for motorcycle specific rain gear including jackets, pants, gloves, and boots. These will still offer protection and ease of normal riding gear but keep you dry as well. A lot of motorcycle rain gear will also come in high vis colors as your visibility will be diminished when riding in the rain and you want to make sure you're staying seen. We actually have quite a few waterproof rain gear at yamanube.co. It's a shameless plug but you should go and check it out. Riding in the rain will also require a bit of modification to your riding style as well. In wet conditions, you want to be more gentle with the application of your throttle and brakes to avoid loss of traction. Many newer or higher end motorcycles will come with a rain power mode that lessens the throttle response for this exact reason. But I'll be perfectly honest, unless you're riding like a leader bike or a very high powered motorcycle, you don't really need to put it in rain mode, you just need to manage the throttle, you'll pretty much be fine. The only time I found that I actually needed rain mode was when I was riding the ZH2 in the rain and I did not want the full bananas on that bike. I actually did put it in rain mode when I had to ride it in the wet one time. If you live in an area with a cold winter and insist on riding year round, you might need to talk to your psychiatrist if upping the dose on your medication. And if you're stifling your demon with pharmaceuticals, you will still want to ride in the northern winter, get a winter beater, and wear lots and lots of layers. We have a whole video dedicated to winter riding if you want to go back and check it out. But I just don't really recommend it, it just kinda sucks. In other parts of the country or the world, riding weather also becomes less than ideal when the temperatures are too hot, case in point here in Texas. In this case, invest in some lightweight and breathable motorcycle gear that still offers protection, make sure to stay hydrated and avoid sitting in a standstill in traffic when at all possible. By the way guys, we've got a special promotion going on at yamanube.co. We got hooked up with the guys over at Scorpion Helmets and we could not be more excited to have them on the store. In fact, we're running a special for this weekend only where you can get a Scorpion XO R420 helmet for 20% off. Prepare to be blown away by the incredible XO R420. It's a Snell approved full face helmet that goes beyond expectations at this price point. The XO R420 shatters the mold of sub $200 helmets, delivering cutting edge materials and performance features while fitting perfectly on the most common intermediate oval head shapes and complete with dual safety homologation, a rare feat found in helmets that cost twice, even three times the price. So go to yamanube.co and enjoy 20% off of this incredible helmet. Don't delay. If the threat of high vis gear wasn't dorky enough for you to daily ride your motorcycle, you're also going to want some luggage. Motorcycles typically have limited storage space compared to cars. That goes without saying, right? But that doesn't mean you don't have options. Many touring motorcycles have plenty of cleverly designed storage compartments and every other motorcycle has the ability to be equipped with aftermarket luggage like saddlebags or hard panniers. Having luggage options allows you to carry essential items such as work gear, groceries, or personal belongings without compromising your ability to ride comfortably. It enhances the practicality of using a motorcycle as your primary mode of transportation. Be 
because unless you're a monk who owns nothing besides one set of robes and some prayer beads, you'll need to utilize storage on your motorcycle if you plan on riding it daily. Having waterproof luggage will be a game changer because again, inclement weather is the enemy of the daily motorcyclist. You don't want to have all your secret and confidential work documents become illegible after a run-in with a storm cloud. Similarly, depending on where you will be parking your bike when riding it daily, it may be smart to have luggage that locks or is easily removed or brought with you inside so you don't run the risk of having some vagrant digging through your valuables in search of the lost Dutchman's treasure. Another thing you may want to consider when dailying your motorcycles is installing some creature comforts or purchasing some accessories for added convenience. Modern cars have a massive suite of tech features from infotainment systems to driving aids, and if you've become accustomed to these things, you may start to be less committed to daily motorcycling. To prevent this, you can take advantage of some gizmos and gadgets that will make your motorcycling more enjoyable. One of the easiest things you can do is get a motorcycle headset or a comm system. Just being able to listen to music or a podcast while routing is going to make those long commutes much more enjoyable. We like Cardos. We've used them forever. We sell them at Aminoob.co. We do recommend you grab them from there. It's also a great way to have a phone mounting system as well so you can access the GPS navigation or other business on your phone. We love Rock Forum. I've had a Rock Forum phone case for years and I love having their mounts on all of our bikes. This isn't a sponsored video. It's just a matter of fact. I'm just letting you guys know. In a similar circumstance, you need to use your phone frequently while riding. Installing a USB charger can make your life a lot easier. Many newer motorcycles come with USB chargers already installed, but it is super easy to install one if you don't afford a 2023 BMW with an air-conditioned wireless phone charging compartment. I remember when I first bought my Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled, that was the first bike I put a USB charger on, and it was really cool while I was doing some really long-distance adventure riding out in Mexico to be able to see my uh, GPS and all that sort of thing. Having a charger on your bike in case your phone dies while you're on the road, actually super convenient. It will also make your ride way more comfortable to install wind protection and heated grips. Wind protection like a windscreen or fairing reduces overall fatigue at higher speeds and can help keep the cold and some rain off of you for riding in bad weather. Heated grips will of course keep your hands warm during cold rides as well and they are a game changer. I love heated grips. Uh, if I were to get a touring bike, it needs to have heated grips no matter what. Having your bike set up to be as comfortable as possible is only going to make it easier to commit to daily riding. If you want to daily ride a motorcycle, you need to consider your ability to carry a passenger. Even if you will be the only one on the bike 99% of the time, ultimately there will be a time in which you have a passenger ride with you and having decent accommodations will make the situation a lot more enjoyable for both of you. It is also important to make sure you're confident in your ability to ride with a passenger on a motorcycle. Compared to having someone hop in the passenger side of a car, riding on a motorcycle is a far more intimate and involved experience. Be sure to have proper gear for your passenger to wear, make sure they know how to properly get on and off the motorcycle, where to put their feet and where to put their hands. To us riders, this all sounds like common sense, but it's important that the obvious is stated when you're responsible for a passenger's safety as well. Communicate with them how their body should be positioned and make sure they know not to combat the balance and movement of a motorcycle by leaning against a turn. When routinely riding with a passenger, you may need to adjust your suspension settings to accommodate the extra weight. I know I had to completely rework my suspension after I had your mom on the back of my bike. Having a passenger on your bike will also affect your balance during slow speed maneuvers. That is one of the most immediate noticeable differences when riding two up. If you plan to daily ride a motorcycle as a primary form of transportation, make sure you're confident in your ability to ride with a passenger. If you intend to regularly ride two up, take that into consideration when choosing which motorcycle to ride, as having a bike that is too small, uncomfortable, or lacking in power will make the two up riding unpleasant for both parties. When you only use your motorcycle for the occasional ride on the weekends, you might think that they're relatively low maintenance machine, but once you start using it as your primary mode of transportation and routinely rack up miles while commuting to work and running errands on top of your normal leisurely riding, you will be faced with necessary maintenance a lot more frequently. The manual for your specific motorcycle will outline all of the necessary service intervals, but as a general guide, here's what you should expect as far as routine maintenance. Oil and filter changes of course need to be done. For those of you who exclusively ride for leisure or for seasonal riders whose riding seasons are limited to just three months, you can typically get away with changing oil and filter just once a season. But when you're exclusively riding your bike, it is best to stick with the 5,000 mile intervals for synthetic oil changes. Of course, you have to keep your chain clean and lubed when you're daily riding a motorcycle cycle, you'll be putting a lot more wear and tear on every aspect of your bike, so you'll have to be more cognizant of things like coolant flushes, brake pads, and tires. Like I said, for seasonal and weekend riders, it may take multiple riding seasons to reach a lot of these maintenance milestones, but for the daily rider, we'll be confronted with them going far more regularly. This is when you start to realize that daily 
Driving a motorcycle isn't going to save you all that much money compared to driving a car, despite cheaper purchase prices and likely better gas mileage because small, high-stress machines like motorcycles require smaller maintenance windows for just about every wear item like fluids and tires. Seriously, tires on bikes just don't last that often. I just had to change the tires on my truck and I went for 35,000 miles on that set of tires. Whereas on a bike, you're lucky to get 10,000 on a sports set of tires and maybe even 5,000 on a rear set of tires if you're rocking some seriously sticky rubber. So if you're gonna daily ride a bike, make sure you get a service manual and all the proper tools so you can stay on top of maintenance on your own. If you intend on daily riding, you'll soon be confronted by the lack of convenience and creature comforts you have in a car. You may even be forced to reconcile your choice of motorcycle and switch to something better suited for comfortable commuting. Sure, there will be some sort of delusional masochist in the comments that says, I daily ride my R6, but for the average rider who values their spine and coccyx, it is wise to look in another direction. Look for a motorcycle that offers a comfortable riding position and ergonomic design. Consider factors such as seat comfort, handlebar position, foot peg placement, and wind protection. A relaxed riding posture reduces fatigue and enhances comfort during longer commutes. Fuel efficiency is also crucial for daily commuting to minimize costs and maximize range. Smaller displacement bikes, especially those known for urban commuting, offer excellent fuel economy. Opt for motorcycles known for their reliability and low maintenance requirements. Look for models with a reputation for durability, quality construction, and a track record of long-term reliability. As well, all that to say is you should probably look at something like a Honda before a Ducati. Or hey, have both bikes, but utilize a reliable low maintenance Japanese bike as the daily mule, and then take the Ducati out on the weekends. If your commute is longer, you want to take advantage of longer rides, a sport turn or a touring bike will have a good balance of storage and comfort. You can go the route of the small, simplistic, air-cooled dual sport with a milk crate zip tied to the back, or you can get an FJR with hard bags. Each bike has a different side of the same coin of functional utility. When daily riding your bike, you'll need to take into consideration your options for parking your motorcycle. Motorcycles have advantages and disadvantages when it comes to parking. On the one hand, they're smaller and easier to fit into small spaces. Many metropolitan areas actually have free or exclusive parking spaces for motorcycles to aid in downtown congestion. If you work in an area like this, this will work in your favor. But at the same time, frequently parking your motorcycle in public also exposes it to risk. A motorcycle left unattended is more susceptible to theft than a car would be. So if you're gonna be regularly parking your bike in public, be sure to utilize a lock, especially if your bike is left in the same general area every day while you're at work. It would be pretty easy for a motorcycle thief to recognize your shiny bike sitting in the same spot for the same amount of time day in and day out. And if you don't use a disc lock, alarm system, or a tracker, it may not be there when you walk out of the office one day. For added peace of mind, you could always throw a motorcycle cover over it as well. Sometimes keeping it out of sight can make your bike less of a target. Keeping your motorcycle safe is an important factor for every rider, but is much more of a concern for the daily rider who's leaving it parked in a public place 40 hours a week. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. How many of you daily ride your motorcycle? I want to hear from all the sickos who commute during Midwestern winters or put 20,000 miles a year on a sport bike. I know you're out there because I used to be one of you. Be sure to subscribe if you like the video. We got all sorts of motorcycle content for every type of rider with near daily uploads. If you need rain gear, motorcycle parts, or accessories, you can find everything you need at yamminoob.co as well. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Fact. The shortest war in history occurred between Britain and Zanzibar on August 27th, 1896. It lasted only 38 minutes, making it the briefest recorded war in the annals of warfare. Goodbye. Keep, Keep watching, watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah.